What's up, everybody? I'm Dreadful Goose. I'm here at Murder the Mix Studios. I'm with my man, Jesse, who's a really good friend of mine, and we are going to be doing something that's a little bit unexpected. He decided to just visit me today, and we were kicking it, hanging out, and after a couple of drinks, I started breaking out some guitars. And then I was like, oh, and check this one out, and check this one out, and check this one out, motherfucker. So we are going to be talking about the rest of my BC Rich guitar collection today. So let's get to it. <laughs> what do you. So, Goose, how were you able to get the ones that were one out of one in the world? Uh, well, there's a few custom shops, man. So, I've never seen another Warlock like this. I've seen some similar, but Oscar actually went with... Oscar's the guy I got it from. Oscar, shout out to you because you're the fucking man. So, Oscar basically had some, done, some work done to this guitar, which makes it so unique because there is no other ones that I've seen that have the old school like look where they have the you know like the rosewood um overlay here or the rosewood cap this one is more of a stain it's not really a, a rosewood cap but it's so cool because it gives it that old school look and i've always wanted a white warlock so when he was like yeah i got a white warlock custom shop seven string for sale. I was like, all right, cool, let me see it. And I had seen a few of them before. Tommy, the same guy who sold me this one, the white bitch, um, he had one for sale, similar, but it was only, I believe, one pickup, and it did not have the old school, like, look on the headstock, which that was like a deal breaker for me, because I'm all about, like, it's gotta play good, but it's also gotta look good. Um, and yeah, when I when Oscar, I was like already really interested in buying it. And then he showed me a picture of it. I was like, bro, take my fucking money right now. Send me that shit. Like, whatever you need, let's go. So Oscar is the fucking man. Really cool dude. He's got he's got a really cool BC Rich collection too. He's got a really sick Iron Bird. And he's got a really sick uh, I've seen some mockingbirds that he's had as well, which is pretty cool. He's had a couple of really nice axes. Um, so again, Oscar, you're the fucking man. Shit. Um, tell me a little history of your signature uh, solo over here. I wouldn't say the it's Goosella. a signature. I wouldn't say it's, I wouldn't say it's a signature. They, I wish BC Ridge would make me a signature, but I guess not that important. Um, but there's only one Goosella. So when people see this guitar, they know whose it is. Like, there's no fucking question. Like, you better recognize, kid, this is mine. So when you see that guitar, no one else is going to have that. That's the Guzilla, man. This thing is cool. It was the first or the only guitar that I've gotten under the new relaunch. It's not the only one I've played. All of the ones that I have played are really cool. They, they play really nice. The quality, I'm not... You know, I, I can't say anything bad about them. Like, they're great. I've played a lot of them. I've played the new Stealth. I've played the new Mockingbird. Uh, I played the new Warlock. Although I'm not a fan of some of the, you know, the Fishman stuff and the, the Kill Switch. N not, does not appeal to me at all. But as far as playability and sound, they sound great. You know, the, the guitars are really well made. Um, this one I love. So this one's cool because I've done a few videos on this one. The neck is thicker than your standard seven string Shredzilla that you can buy. Uh, you can't buy this one, which is why I love it so much because it's cool. Uh, and it's got a unique spec where it's the walnut, uh, walnut as well on the headstock. The diamond inlays are really cool. That, that was like a win-win a for me because I love diamond inlays. I don't, I don't like those new inlays that they have as far as those little like flamethrower things. Not my... You know, this is not a deal breaker for me, but if I'm going to choose, I want diamonds. Like, you know, it's just old school BC Rich with a modern twist. I love the fact that it's an arch top. I believe it's my only arch top. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I, I think it's my only arch top. I've never had or owned an arch top, and I really like this. I really like this on a strap body. I've always wanted a strap body, um, but I could never find one that was like aggressive enough. Like I love fenders, but they're just not for me. Um, so when I saw this, I was just like, I gotta have it. And Damon and Sarah over at Red Blanket, you guys are amazing because I had let them know, like, I really want this guitar, like when they posted some pictures of another Shredzilla. And I was getting ready to purchase that one. I was on the phone with Damon and Damon's like, hey, Goose, by any chance, you want to see this walnut one that I got in just for like shits and giggles? And then he showed me a picture of it and I was like, yo, I called him my guitar player right away and I was like, dude, check this shit out that my man Damon over at Red Blanket just sent me. He said, this is the one that I just got in, but this is the one I told him I'm going to purchase. And he, my, my, my guitar player, Hangman, was like, yo, bro, fuck that shit. Get the other one. Get the walnut one. And I am so happy <laughs> that I listened to my guitar player because this is a fucking badass axe. One of my favorite things about it, I've already talked about it in some of the other videos, but again, this is so cool. The recessed strap locks, like I've never had that in a guitar. I didn't even know they fucking made that shit like that. So that is really, really cool. And people would say, oh, it's not a big deal. But it is because like Paul Gilbert has said before in his signature Ibanez guitar, his his the horn of his guitar is like right up against his chest and you really feel it. You really feel it differently. And that's kind of the same with this. Like it's like right up against my chest and you know, you get to feel all the reverberation coming from the instrument. Fucking badass, man. I, I love it. I love this guitar. Plays great. It sounds great. The DeMarzios, you guys know I'm a DeMarzio artist. So these are, it's so cool that they already came with the DeMarzios and I didn't have to swap anything out. So again, these, or this axe in particular is amazing. And the new ones are also well, really well made and well, uh, great sounding guitars. So Goose, what can you tell me about the history of this guitar? Because I could recall playing with you back in Mortar. Oh yeah. Back hey, in 2010. Right. Murder, murder. murder. It's not remember. Murder. <laughs> say it right. It's been a long so, time, brother. Oh God. I don't have my rings on in this video. God, people are gonna think it's not me. It's a lot I'm of history foster. in this guitar. Yeah, man. Just Jesse, for those of you who don't know, Jesse's the man behind the camera. You or you might if you're just tuning in. Jesse's the dude behind the camera, and he's a very good friend of mine, and he was also a former bandmate of mine, and we played together many, many places, many, many shows, and he knows how much I love, absolutely love this axe. Like, I just shot a video talking about some of the stories behind this guitar, and I have so many fucking stories about this guitar, and it's funny how every time I talk about it, a new memory pops up, and a new, like, you know, I, I seem to recall, oh, I was in this place, or I was in this fucking venue, or whatever. And every time I pick this guitar up, it's like coming home. Uh, it's, it, it just feels like it was, it's right. And it uh, was meant to be. I have the, cool, the coolest story about this guitar, maybe how I got it. Um, I can never share exactly <laughs> the full details of how I got it. Um, but I can share the majority of the story and, but I will do that in another video because it's, I, I've got to dedicate an entire video. Like I've said in my earlier BC Rich collection, uh, videos, I do have to dedicate a video to each one of these guitars. And I think the coolest thing about this is how I got it. So I cannot spoil it by saying it now, but. Um, definitely watch the video that I just did about this. Again, I'll put it on a card somewhere up here. Um, and check out more about this guitar, the Iceman. All right, dude, so my man Pete is gonna hate me, but I still have yet to swap out the pickups on this guitar. Pete is a really cool dude. He's got a sick collection of guitars and amps. And he's got some fucking crushing riffs. Like, I love every time. He sent me some shit of him and his band playing the other day. And I was like, really, really like, dude, these riffs are killer. They're like bone crushing riffs that he's got. Pete, don't be mad at me. I still haven't played <laughs> this guitar too much. 
Uh, for those of you who don't know, I was literally telling Pete, like, dude, I want that Steve Smythe bitch. I want it. I want it. I want it. And he's like, nah, I'm not selling. And then finally, he's like, yo, dude, you want to buy the Steve Smythe bitch? And I was like, yes. So we did it. I got it. Pete takes care of his shit. It's like in great condition. It's probably got more scratches in my possession and I have <laughs> barely played it. Um, for those of you wondering why the bridge is missing, is if you've seen my other videos where I talk about this guitar. Hold on. Where I talk about this bad boy right here, which I absolutely love. Check that out. Rest in peace, senior and junior for that. Um, you know, it's unfortunate. Um, basically, the bridge that came on this guitar was shit. I've shown it in my other videos. I will link that in a card right here if you guys want to see that video. Sorry, I had something in my eye. Um, but basically, I needed to figure out if this guitar was worth keeping or not because of some issues that came with the guitar. And all of those issues have been solved and fixed now. This thing plays amazing. It sounds phenomenal. Um, I love this thing. I, I, this has actually been my main player for the last couple of weeks. Look at that top. In the light, you can really see it move, man. Like, just that flame that flame top is ridiculous, dude. You can see the back of the neck. Really nice, really nice all maple. But, yeah, basically, I needed to figure out if this guitar was worth keeping, uh, especially after getting that shit bridge. I don't know why BC Rich in the 1990, like 1999 decided to build these amazing guitars. This is probably, like, one of the best eras like that custom shop era um and dude I, I just i don't i don't again i don't know why bc rich decided to put shit bridges like they were like pot metal i actually think i still have the bridge somewhere here it's like pot metal bridges on handcrafted like amazing amazing guitars i have no idea why they did that maybe they were trying to be cheap i don't know but again, I needed to figure out if this guitar was worth keeping. So I took the only other seven string uh, Floyd Rose that I had at the time that was available to swap out. And I took it off the Steve Smythe guitar and I put it in here and it's been in here ever since. So I've just kind of been postponing getting another Floyd Rose original for the seven string Steve Smythe. And I also have the Marzio uh, that will be sending me a bunch of pickups to put in all my guitars that don't have already uh the marzio pickups and last but not least who's the only one left no we got two more we got two more did i did i speak about that one no, so sir this one is cool this one is really cool i've always wanted an nj deluxe warlock they looked great they sounded great and above all else I don't know what magic they put in these NJ Deluxe guitars, but they play so well. These are some of the best playing guitars I have ever played. Like, I'm talking about Custom Shop. These are some of the best playing guitars, period. Like, I've played extremely expensive, handmade Gibsons, Les, you know, Gibson Les Pauls, PRSs, BC Rich, Jackson. For some reason, every NJ Deluxe that I've ever played plays just like this guitar, amazing, ridiculously amazing. The main reason I bought this guitar, I didn't even want it. I saw it on eBay, I was actually in London with my girlfriend, and thank goodness for the time difference, if not one of you motherfuckers here in the United States would have snagged it from me, but uh, because I was able to be fortunate and wake up, like, you know, on a five hour time difference, five hours ahead, I woke up super early and I snagged this shit. And another, unfortunately, I haven't played this guitar either. I know these motherfuckers are probably watching this shit like, fuck this guy. He's got like really nice BC Riches and he's only playing like two of them. I'm going to get to them. I'm going to get to all of them. I promise. I just got to hook them up the way I want. And well, yeah, this one is pretty cool. It's pretty, it's not your typical NJ Deluxe because it is a seven string NJ Deluxe Warlock which they only made for the Japanese market. And I don't know how many of them there actually are out there of these seven string NJ Deluxe. 
I think maybe only like 10 to 20 to 25. I have no idea. If you know, drop it down in the comments below. I may have to ask Tim Keys, who was uh, one of the product, one of the guys working for BC Rich at the time. Maybe I can even ask my boy Bill Xavier. Who knows? I don't know if they know. It's been a couple of years, but this thing is cool. And again, the main reason I bought this is because I remember playing all those NG Deluxes that, I, that I've played in the past, and they all played amazing. And as soon as I got this out of the, the case, I was really hoping that it played just as good as all of those other NG Deluxes that I've played in the past. And it did not disappoint. The only thing I hate about this guitar are the EMGs. It sounds, you know, thin as hell. And it's not the guitar, it's not the construction, it's the EMGs. EMGs on guitar, for me, horrible. Um, but once I get these pickups swapped out, I will be playing this guitar a lot more. And another reason why I got this guitar is because, um, you know, if I've got to do any tours and I don't want to take any of my, like, you know, if I don't want to take my Guzilla since I go to one of a kind and I don't want to take any of my custom shops on tour, I can take this guy and, you know, if something were to happen to it, I'd be bummed out, but I wouldn't be as upset as if it were you know, one of these, like the, the handmade Warlock or the handmade Mockingbird or the Guzilla. So that's the story of this guy. And last, but definitely not least, this is, I guess, this is Grandpa. This is the oldest one out of them all, 1983 in pearl white with th this is this is like when you think about bc rich this is classic bc rich man fucking rosewood cap kaler tremolo demarzio the classic demarzio combo which i absolutely love and they sent this this combo this demarzio combo sounds good on any guitar i guarantee you in a Les Paul, in a PRS, in a BC Ridge, in a Jackson, in a Charvel, you put a super a Demarzio Super Distortion in the bridge, and you put a Demarzio PAF in the neck, gold combination, no matter what guitar it's in. For those of you who are classic BC Ridge fans, you already know what all the electronics do, but let's run through it for those guys just tuning in who want to know more about the history of, of, of BC Ridge. So we've got master volume toggle switch we've got a boost a boost tone tone a baritone switch coil tap for the bridge coil tap for the neck i always leave that coil tapped because i love one of my favorite sounds of the of any guitar is a neck pickup that is either a single coil or a neck pickup a really nice humbucker that is coil tapped. I just love it. it. Makes It makes me feel like I'm playing a really nice Fender Strat. And this is the PAF, the DiMarzio PAF 36th anniversary. It's one of my favorite neck pickups. I don't really get, you know, excited about neck pickups because I hardly ever use them. Um, but this one, as soon as I put it in, I was just like, wow, they really, they hit the nail on the head with this 36th anniversary PAF. The regular PAF is already amazing from the Marzio, but the 36th anniversary PAF, absolutely love it. Uh, I think I covered all this. Oh, so if I remember correctly, I think this is to put the guitar in phase and out of phase. I think this is out of phase. And this only works when the toggle switch is in the middle position where you have both pickups. And I believe this is to turn on the booster for the bridge. And this is the booster for the neck, or two boosters. I don't know, <laughs> I don't remember. Honestly, I, I took the batteries out because I was like, I don't, I'm never gonna use the boosters. I'm already going through amps that are ridiculously high gain, and I, I don't need the, the boosters. So I just didn't put the batteries in. But, you know, there you go. So this thing is, this guy is, you know, neck through. The neck on this is absolutely amazing. I put some, well, it already came with strap locks. And 
The cool thing about this one is I believe the original hardware was gold and Tommy I was I was like I really want I really want a vintage bitch. I have no idea what color I want it in. I didn't even know they made them in white. The pearl white is such a rare color to find these in and especially in this condition. And I he Tommy had sent me pictures of it where it had the gold hardware and I was like ah. I kind of want it. I kind of don't. I'm going to have to spend all that money getting black hardware because that's what I wanted. And then Tommy messages me and he says, dude, I've actually, I got to send you an updated picture because I've already changed the hardware out to black. And when I saw this thing looking like this, I was like, yo, I want that shit. And Tommy is the fucking man because at the time uh, I had a bunch of music expenses and, you know, I was just rebuilding a brand new studio at the time. So almost all of my funds were going to, you know, building up my studio. And Tommy was really, really cool. Allowed me to, you know, pay this thing off little by little. And then once I was like, yo, Tommy, I got, I got all of the money left that I owe you. I can go pay it, you know, this weekend and pick it up in person. Because Tommy lives in New York and I live in, like, Jersey, right across the river from Times Square. And, you know, I traveled out to New York to go meet up with Tommy. Super cool dude. And I cannot thank him enough. This was my first ever handmade, not only BC Rich, but my first ever handmade guitar. And it's kind of sparked another addiction within BC Rich, where it's just like I just wanted more and better ones and more, more rare and collectible ones and all that shit. So, there you go. That is... 1983 rich bitch hope you guys enjoyed and to my bc rich family you guys know who you are all the guys that follow me from the facebook groups and instagram groups thank you guys especially for those of you who tuned in and watched all of these cool guitars being displayed and for those of you guys who are new to the channel thank you as well for watching and taking the time out of your day to spend it with me and my man Jesse behind the camera here in my studio. And so, once again, thank you all so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow all my social media links down below. Peace.